welcome to Pegging Coffee Talk. Here are your hosts, Lady Alba and Lord Knight. So, all right. Um, Myth, but we need anthropology. Yeah. So. If I said that right. <laughs> yeah. So, myth is, myth is great, but myth. If, if you want to understand a people and their faith, you yeah. need anthropology. So, when I was a fledgling... Fledging? Fledgling witch. Neophyte. Neophyte, yeah. yeah. Many, many, many. Moons. Yeah. <laughs> you were very keen on pointing out all of the myths and legends that are bullshit. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. And I think one of the ones that shocked the class that I was in was, of course, Merlin and the Knights of the Round Table, and... It was completely made up. Right. And very few people, I feel like, know that. The Mists of Avalon, which is a phenomenal book, and... A wonderful movie, and... Same thing. It's all the Lady of the Lake, right? It's, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are probably certain aspects of this story... Sure. ...that used to be myths... Well, in the ancient times, that got sort of weaving into this. Well, it's it's what we know about a lot of biblical tales. It's what we know about a lot of mythology. It was originally based on something, some maybe real event or piece of information that they wanted to distribute to the populace. But, you know, they didn't have CNN. No. So... Well, again, you have the Lady of the Lake, which to me is a reference to Danu, mm-hmm. who is actual water. Mm-hmm. But the idea becomes, right? But the idea becomes the Lady of the Lake. But you had to make stories interesting, oh, right? God, yeah. You had to make them catchy. You had to, like, the Brothers Grimm, right? You didn't want children to talk to strangers and walk off into the woods. You gotta make it something to hold their attention because kids don't listen to lectures no (laughs) they listen to stories right and if those kids grow up believing or those those legends those stories what do they do they tell them to their kids who tell them to their kids and it keeps on keeping on but what i found i guess interesting early on was that understanding that we have to kind of take a look at the myth and then go, what came before it? What's underneath it? You were the first person to introduce me to the Picts. Right. I had never even heard the word Pict. I was like, what in the hell is this? And the fact that we, and if you don't know what it is, go look it up. I'm not going to ruin that part for you. You figure it out. But, (laughs) but right. Elves. Fairies, Fairies, sprites, brownies, Meats. what else? Um, oh, brownies. Uh, possibly leprechauns. Possi- well, leprechauns, all those. Changelings. Mis- changelings are all connected to a group tribe. of people, a tribe of people known as the Picts. Who were an early inhabitant. Of the British Isles. And, that, and I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, I had never heard of these people. And so, of course, then I, I mean, part of it was my, my studies. I had to do some research on them, but I took it a little bit further. And, and what I realized was I was like, okay, so now I'm studying a people and to get a better understanding of how they lived and their faith as a result of that. And, you know, in talking to a friend, she was like, oh, yeah, you're studying anthropology. And I was like, the hell? What? Because <laughs> I never made that connection. And I was like, oh, my God, that's exactly what it is. Yes. So you effectively become an archaeologist of people. Of people. And start looking at the who, the what, the why, and the when. And then... The myths start to make an awful lot of sense. Because once you are start to understand how people live their lives, mm-hmm. it's one thing for us to sit here. Me and you both come from a farming background. You more so than me, but yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's different when you're living in that lifestyle. Yes. 
Okay, it's different when you're there. Hence the reason why a lot of these anthropologists do that, uh, where they're going to these older, uh, these uh, tribes that have never had contact. Oh, oh yeah. Where they, where they dress and act and behave and do exactly what they do so they don't mess with the culture. Even in modern times, so there's still, people are fascinated with the, the Gullah of South Carolina, that coastal right. region where you have this this these people that are like a native tribe and they are so insulated from modern life they're still doing everything the way they did it hundreds of years ago and this is taking place now in 2023 and people are still going to study to learn to understand about them, their language, their call. They have a whole language and people are like, what in South mm-hmm. Carolina? Yeah, yeah. This is like, yeah. I mean, this is no different than the Mennonites. Yes. The Amish. I mean, all, yeah. The, 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 we're, we're, we're talking about the same thing here. Now, again, what I always found interesting on myths and legends mm. is if you don't know what in the world you believe, you don't see those less. You don't see those myths or those lessons in those myths. If you say that again, if you don't know what you, you believe, believe in, okay. like, I can read a myth. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, we're very big a ponderance of keeping your word. Right. So I can see that a lot in the myths that we tell. Mm. If I didn't believe in it, I wouldn't necessarily I see it. I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, because, I mean, it's it's what I think most of us do. We, the Bible's a great example of this. Right. People take from it certain passages or certain ideas because that's a principle or a a tenant of faith that they want to share the share yeah Yeah. because they believe so strongly in it and they believe that this passage illustrates what they believe the best right and then that gets spread absolutely i yeah i totally agree with that and i think this is part of how myths are yeah and then you also have certain aspects of myth that were very practical for the time. Exactly. So we, as modern pagans, have a little bit of a duty to understand the difference so that we are practicing our religion in accordance with what we do actually believe and what is applicable to us today. So here, here's my best example on this, and I can't believe I'm going to use Chris Rock as an example, but <laughs> why not? Okay. He, this is from an old, old special of his where um, he breaks down the reason why, biblically, the Jews were told not to eat pork and why pork became taboo. And it, he was like, yeah, because... If, if all of a sudden your elders and your leaders were like, man, everybody's eating the pork and getting sick, something's going on. And right. we and it's really, we know it's, the, we know the pigs are responsible. We just don't know how to get people to stop eating the, the pig. pig. And w- all it takes is one guy to go, I got it. Tell him God said. Don't do it. Don't eat the pig. And so then the swine becomes, right? Right. Banned. And there you go. And then you have generation upon generation upon generation, no pork. And he, he said in that special, today, for and I don't remember what year it was, but, you know, whatever. It, it's right. 2023. If you were lucky enough to have a pork chop put in front of you, bite the shit out of that motherfucker. Thank you. Because it's not the same logic. Well, no, the reason, it, the reason most people believe it is because there is a particular bacteria and stuff. And if you do not cook it completely properly, yes. it yes. will make you sick and Absolutely. It could kill you. It's what we now know about salmonella and, and uh, E. coli uh, and all of the different, you know, foodborne illnesses that can really fuck us up. But back then, they didn't know that. Well, I, again, hence like the reason like you were talking about with Jewish people, the, the, the separation. There's a lot of Jewish people that have Two refrigerators. And- yes, the Orthodox. Yeah, right. absolutely. There's there's a lot of that. I mean, and I still, I have, my Jewish friends are divided right down the middle. Some of them are like, give me all the bacon. <laughs> and some of them are like, oh, I can't have that. Well, see, now, when we because clean, there's pork in it. 
because when we cleaned houses, we had a few Jewish yeah. orders, it, which some people actually had. Like, and you're sitting back going, you almost have like two different kitchens. Yes, and they do. They do. I had a friend who worked in a uh, Jewish nursing home, and there were there were different refrigerators. refrigerators. And if a staff member put their lunch from home in the wrong refrigerator, the rabbi had to be called in to bless, cleanse, and consecrate right. everything, everything before any of the residents could eat. It was it was a big big deal. And I mean, hey. Again, not, you know, not trying to tear apart anybody's beliefs and, you know, no. that's fine. But again, it's the why. Why is it like this? Where, where is the, you know, do, do we really believe that God came down and said, don't eat the pork? Or do we believe people kept on getting sick when eating the pork and they were saying, right, we got to stop this. Right. Historically, we look back and we can see it. We can document it. We can look and go, oh. I mean, because again, you got to remember, a lot of people forget tribal life was on the edge at all times. Always. Always. All right. One, all it took was one disease, one uh, shit, a case of diarrhea yeah. could wipe out hundreds of people. I mean, because again, the diarrhea going through and just, oh. uh, just even if it was just the hunters. Yes. But again, you got the hunters down for like two or three weeks, not bringing in fresh meat. Abs, and that's a problem. That's a problem. And, and again, there's, that's anthropology. That's that understanding of why people did what they did when they did it. And when we look at that throughout history, we see all these little components of every religion's belief system that was influenced by this. Exactly. So as modern pagans, we have to go, well, okay. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think of like, like one of the Greek myths or the Roman myths that otherwise would be like, a, like a major influence on our lives. Um, okay. Bacchus, Bacchanalia. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right so so the roman orgies that were so popular okay now now again i go okay did the romans just want to get a little freaky so they were like bacchus said it's cool let's do this no but <laughs> you know a little bit i don't less know that. consider he's supposed to be the god of wine the god of wine yep yeah. you get a little times. intoxicated and, yeah <laughs> so i mean and, and being Italian myself and coming from a long line of wine drinkers, I can see where first you got drunk and then you went, this guy is great. <laughs> right? Like, Bacchus is our dude. This seems like a wonderful idea. Yeah. <laughs> but, but Bacchanalia as a celebration in modern society, that's, that's some risky shit. STIs, right? Diseases. Uh, diseases, I mean, infidelity, yeah. pregnancy. There's so many things that can be an issue. That, yeah, you know what? The, the practice got abolished a long time ago. And I don't think that there's too many people out there right now who are going, man, I really wish we could bring back Bacchanalia. Like, you know, <laughs> like pining over the lost ritual. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, now I'm going to say this, mm. but we do have Mardi Gras. We do have Mardi Gras. <laughs> You're right. We have Carnival. We have we have other things, but they're tamer. They're tamer by comparison. <laughs> but you know what? No, I just want you to think. You just refer to Mardi Gras as being tame. <laughs> I saying. mean, compared to what I have read about the Romans, yeah, yeah. it's pretty freaking tame. <laughs> you know, and then there's slavery is another one right. right there's stories throughout mythology of slavery come on we know that that's wrong we know well that i mean you even there. had well we i mean know. as far as that goes even in the old days you had philosophers like the roman the great plato and all oh, that yeah who, who did not who could not envision a world without slavery yes Yes. And, and we've, again, we've evolved. We've evolved so far past that. Right. That we have to look at some of those things skeptically. And again, I think it's funny because pagans are very quick to do it with the Bible, right? We're, right. We're very quick to point out like, well, in Deuteronomy, I mean. and that's bullshit, <laughs> and that's not, and then, you know, no. I mean. 
And, and don't get me to how on the she bears. Yeah. <laughs> like we're very fast to kind of be assholes about the Christian tenants. But then when it comes to our own, we're not stopping to go, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a little messed up. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe that's I mean, I mean, idea. I mean, really, you you got to keep a boom and yeah. you got to get into a bag and be beat to death. That's it. I mean, uh, and then people wonder why there's still the you know sacrifice of animals. Why that's still such a big because back in the day it was necessity. necessity. It was absolutely how you survived. And yes, you had a gr- a harvest. You had a slaughter. You thanked the gods. You spilled the blood. We don't have to do that anymore. I'm going to put it to you this way. And I, I could be wrong here. There was a lot of things that our priests and priestesses saw in society that were bad. We had to put a good spin on. Correct. Because it had to get done. Of course. I mean, let's let's look at the maypole, right? Right. How did we go from dancing around the big penis <laughs> and... And what were basically coming of age children True. going off and fornicating to now what is little kids dancing around a, a, a light pole with a bunch of ribbon. Exactly. Because it had to. Because we, <laughs> you know, that's. Because we needed to bring these subjects up to the kids going, hey, here's what's going to be happening. Yes. And, and can we still celebrate the Maypole, and can we still have that as part of Beltane and May Day festivities? Of course we can, but we're not. We're not doing it the way they did it. No, no, no. There, there's not always a happy time at the end of our. <laughs> no, no. Um, just you know, Burning Man and you know, Wicker Man, that whole thing. I'm like, you do realize that once upon a time it was filled with people, and it was lit on fire. Well, she, I mean, just the guy that they found buried at Stonehenge that was strangled, oh, hit, man. and his throat yeah. cut. Yeah. I mean, there's so many tales of the warriors being found with all, I mean, even the pharaohs, right? They were buried with their dogs, their kids, mm. their slaves, their why. I mean, can you imagine, like, well, my husband's dead. Okay, I guess it's my turn. Like, you, everything he had went with him. Well, I mean, there was like, you know, uh, I forgot which culture it is, but they believed if your head wasn't attached to your body, you couldn't rest well. So mm. they would always decapitate all their enemies before they buried them. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's fun. And that's how they found out that there were enemies because the head would always be, be severed, somewhere, be severed right. somewhere else. Yipes. Yeah, I forgot about that one. That's true. But again, these things turn into other stories. And if we don't pick them apart... We just, we can't just blindly follow them. We can't. We can't just read the mythology and go, well, yeah, I, you know, I follow the the Greek pantheon and traditions and I, you know, I consider myself Dianic. Well, that's great. But you also have to apply that to modern society. Exactly. I mean, again, we don't go through a lot of the, I, I, I do not think any modern woman in Western society is going to go into the bleeding huts. I don't, I, I don't see so. that happening. No, no, I really, I don't, I don't see that happening either. Yeah, you're right. I mean, maybe, I, but like, I at mean, the same n- time, nobody has a fear that your secretary is on her monthly cycle is suddenly going to endow the computer with special properties to where nobody else could use it but her. But at the same time, <laughs> you have retreats right all over the country where people do sometimes engage in these kinds of things that are very archaic. And it's like, why? What benefit are you actually getting from it? Oh, you know, yeah, I'm going to go into my cycle. So I'm going to go spend seven days in the woods in a yurt. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Why? Why? What purpose does it serve now? You know, if if you just want to go on a meditation retreat, knock yourself out. Right. But yeah. Hey, go, go go get a massage. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, a come facial. on, you know, have a piece of cheesecake. I mean, so, <laughs> you don't have to go to those extremes. That's that's a bit much. Yeah. But I, again, something we don't actually practice. But no. again, it is part of our mythology and stuff. Yeah, it is. It is. So please, please, if you're following a particular pantheon, I, Greek, Norse, Egyptian, Roman, 
uh, Native American, Celtic. Uh, Celtic. Uh, uh, what else are we? I mean, the, the uh, tip just, of the iceberg, right? <laughs> Sumerian, whatever it is, do your anthropological diligence and read about the people. I know it may. It, it's a look. It's a little boring, guys. I mean, mm. it is. I, I mean, some of the, and some of these papers read oh, about like you know God. trying to eat sandpaper. Of course, because it's like written by some professor from Columbia University back in 1962, and you're like, <laughs> but it's but it is necessary. It is necessary to have a full understanding. Otherwise, we are no better than anyone else, just blindly following some text. Well, I think I'm out of copy. Damn, I gotta switch to decaf, maybe. Thanks for listening. Join us next week for another episode. Peg and Coffee Talk is brought to you by Life Temple and Seminary. Please visit us at lifetempleseminary.org for more information, as well as links to our social media. Facebook, Discord, Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit. We travel down this trodden path, a maze of stone and mire. Just hold my hand as we pass by a sea of blazing pyres. And so it is the end of our day, so walk with me till morning breaks. And so it is the end of our day, so walk with me till morning breaks.